Good day, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Henry, and we are going to talk about academic self efficacy today. So, let's do a series on how to be self efficacious in an academic setting. First off, I've already done a video on what academic self efficacy is. But let's just talk briefly about what we're talking about. Really, academic self-efficacy and the idea of self-efficacy was an idea that was put forth by Albert Bandura in the 70s. It was part of a larger framework called social learning theory that he was thinking about in terms of talking about what people needed to succeed in certain contexts certain environments. So in this particular case, when we talk about self-efficacy or self-resiliency or several of these terms, often we use them interchangeably as if they're the same thing. Um, and for many people, they are. Self-efficacy by its definition is kind of best thought of as um, behavioral and belief oriented. Um, it's belief oriented because you have to believe that you can do this. And if you have slightly more belief that you can do it than you your actual ability to do it, that's better. And it also includes a behavioral context in terms of thinking about you have to have a goal, you have to be in a certain environment, and that uh, belief that you can do it has to be set up against whatever you're trying to do. Okay, having said all of that, in an academic setting, this idea of self-efficacy has become a very big buzzword. And the idea here is that there are certain things that professors expect you to know how to do that several you know, students don't necessarily know how to do. So let's talk about what those are. In brief form, we expect you to be able to read a text. Right, the textbook is there for a reason. I'm going to make this a little bit less so that you don't have to worry about seeing red all the time. My TEDx shirt is peeking out. All right, so in terms of this, you're reading a text. Um, you have to be able to read the textbook. What does that look like? Well, reading a textbook doesn't necessarily re mean reading it word for word. There are different strategies for different classes in terms of reading the textbook. So let's talk about what that means for chemistry specifically. Also, you should be able to read journal articles. Again, journal articles in the chemistry context or in the STEM context, it's a different deal than journal articles in other contexts. And so in terms of thinking about this, you need to be able to really get a sense of how to do it, at least in science and engineering. For English and social sciences, it might be a bit, a, bit of a bif different deal altogether. All right, or it could be the same. I'm not sure. Okay, in terms of number three, you need to be able to calculate your grade. Okay, calculating your grade is an important piece. Um, many people seem to have lost the art of calculating their grade. And so we need to go back and make sure you know how to do that. There are certainly several ways that professors set up grade calculations, but we're going to go through the one that, at least we'll go through a couple and see where we get from there. And then the last piece is resourcing that we're going to talk about. That's not the last piece that could be part of this. But resourcing, what do you do when you don't know what's going on in the class, okay? So in terms of thinking about this, these are just a few of the different kinds of academic self-efficacy pieces that are out there. We're gonna do a real quick video on each one uh, separately, and then we'll come back and kind of wrap it up. All right, until next time.